Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. It's Monday, that means it's time for a movie Monday, and we're continuing our look at the DC animated films today with Batman Gotham Knight. That's right, everybody. Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers Movie Monday, talking about Batman Gotham Knight from 2008. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is... Delaney Bullock. And this is... Brooks. Can you wait until I say this is and then pause yeah, and say I Brooks? I did wait. Anyway, we're here to talk about Batman Gotham Knight. This is kind of like the Animatrix of Batman. Mm -hmm. It's set in the Nolan verse, right in between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. And I will admit that initially when I first watched this, I was slightly disappointed that it didn't give us enough clues about what was actually going to happen in The Dark Knight. But in hindsight, it definitely sets up the gang war between the Russian and uh, Marconi, yeah, Marconi and all yeah. that stuff. It sets all that up, introduces the new characters, like uh, not Rene Montoya, but the other oh, one. The other guy. Who turns out, the other yeah. woman who turns out to be crooked. At Cro the end. Yeah, 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 but yeah. not really crooked, just her mother, whatever. Anyway, uh, but that's not this, I think, is one of the absolute best DC animated films. I think this is so solid. It's so good. It literally is like the Animatrix. They got six different stories in here. Yeah. They all kind of fit together a little bit, but they all have a very distinctive visual style, a very distinctive uh, artistic expression, and a very distinctive story as well. And they all work together, all put together, and, and, and kept in a cohesive, awesome shell by the vocal performance of Kevin Conroy, who is the Batman voice for pretty much everybody. And should should always be the Batman voice for everybody. It's Kevin Conroy. That's like the best Batman voice, right? So I love this so much. It's a beautiful film. It's luscious. It's got beautiful colors. Brilliant. A brilliant performance, as usual, as Batman by Kevin Conroy. But just, it's such an amazing direction. I love this film so much. I'm gushing over it. Jelani, what do you think about this movie? Gotham Knight. It's amazing. Um, it was mind-blowing. Uh, it's, it's so many different, like, vignettes. And they're put together so well. And each one tells us a little bit of a story that I could catch on to. Like, you know, from the beginning with the kids, you know, the, throughout all of the villains that they, yeah. they, they just sneak in. Like, they're in that universe. So, you know, Dark Knight had Deadshot, Killer, Killer Croc. Croc. Yeah. You know? So you have, like, all these characters and, and they're molded together in this beautiful story with different artists telling their their own version of what batman looks like as what's what he's supposed to be yeah their own interpretation, and who, uh, yeah. interpretation of batman which is perfect and so i i love this film across the board it, it, it's it, it's very enlightening yeah. i love each one i love yeah. each story what do you think about it brooks well, i like it pretty well it's less it's less a batman story and it's kind of more like a day in the life of batman mm -hmm. okay like, just yeah, from yeah. like yeah. different perspectives yeah. You know, like the kids all have like different, uh, their different Cops. views of what yeah. Batman is. Like, oh, he's a, he's a living shadow. I think, and it's beautiful. No, he's a that, giant robot. And it's great how yeah. that sets up how each of these directors, because they took like Japanese anime directors and paired them up with, with a, like mostly American uh, writers, writers, comic book writers mm -hmm. even, like Brian Azzarello, Greg Rucka, Alan Burnett, for instance. Yeah. And, and it just works so well. And I love the, like that opening story sets up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like, these are different interpretations of Batman, right? Yeah, it's like, it's less about fighting supervillains and more about, like, just Batman just, just being Batman, Batman on a regular basis, you know? He's and, out trying to solve cases and, you know, bust criminals and stuff like that. Yeah, and and it, and it has a little, a little bit of Gordon in there, and it definitely fills out that world of what has happened mm -hmm. post-Batman Begins with the, with the gangs and all that yeah. stuff. You see Scarecrow in it. Yeah. You know, and that's super fun. The most Scarecrow we get in it this is. whole Nolan verse. Yeah. Um, I really like this movie, man. I think it's beautiful. I agree with you guys. Like, we're, like, just crazy for this. We're going to go through the individual segments. First of all, though, Kevin Conroy is Batman to me. I've always loved his voice as Batman ever yeah. since that animated series first debuted. That is the voice that I read in my you head know he's Batman, when I read man. the comic books. What do you yeah. think about Kevin Conroy? Yeah, he is Batman. That is, that's Batman's voice. That's his demeanor. I was raised on the animated series. So that, I mean, oh, yeah. to pick him... And he's the voice for every Batman in each yeah. segment. And, and Bruce Wayne, because he does a great tell, Bruce he Wayne. He does a great too. Bruce Wayne as well. And it's it, it, they capture, by the way, the character of Batman very well in this movie. It's so like interladen, and, and the fact that it's still Kevin Conroy doing that voice. Yeah, it makes it all it better. Keeps it yeah, it together. keeps it nice. Right. What do you think about Kevin Conroy? 
I hate Kevin Conroy. Oh yeah, of course. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Like, I I grew up too, like with the animated series, and I really love that. Like, I was in the the anime series before I was even in the comic books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, so he's always been my Batman. Yeah, I think it's the best Batman out like there. Like, when I read yeah. Batman, that's the voice I'm hearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's his voice. Absolutely. So the first one is, Have I Got a Story for You? That's from uh, Studio 4 Degrees Celsius. Um, I like the art style. It's different. It's got a graffiti-type yeah. art time to design. I love the story. Like, we were talking about how the kids have their own version of their Batman story and who Batman is and what how it represents to them. And that is what the whole entire project is about is about the way that batman impresses upon different people so i love this one i think it's a really good very solid opener what do you think about this i agree it's each version and the kids are animated they tell a story yeah we don't know if they're whoppers or whatever it is but it is what they saw as and you you piece together that story even though it's out of order right it's fun and it's great it's like it's amazing and they all got together and told the story from that day. And it, the the final story at the end, yeah. where the kid actually helps, he's like, Good. and he picks him up, I owe you one, kid. And he walks off. Man, all in the smoke's still there. Have I got a story oh, I love I love the bat creature Batman, the cyborg yeah. Batman, and, and the ghost shadow the ghost Batman. Shadow, and then yeah. when he's a real man, he's like hurting. He's and like he's limping, cut. he's like grunting, he's cut yeah. up. Yeah, it's super awesome. What do you think about that one, man? I thought it was really good. It, it, it set up the uh, the tone of the movie a little lot, I think. Absolutely, I think like, so. How do people see Batman? And like, you know, he's kind of a legend. Nobody knows what he really is or, you know, if he's even really a guy at all. So like, you know, like seeing him, you know, for it with a kid, you know, they would make up their own kind yeah, of story. Yeah, right. Him. Oh man, he was just like here and then he was over here. The second segment is Crossfire. It's written by Greg Rucka. That's why Crispus Allen is yeah. in it, I guarantee you. Um, it's Here's done by produ- it's by Production <laughs> IG. I love this one. Yeah. I thought it was so great. It's basically about it's it's not Montoya, but it should be. Yeah. And it's in this Crispus Allen, and they and Crispus has a problem about, about Batman, Batman being a vigilante and how Gordon like relies on him. They just feel like they're like and so they had to move. Uh, uh, like someone they were they caught. moving. Was it the dude Gordon, that they caught? Because Gordon first? was the target. It, no, that was a different one. Yeah, they were yeah, moving yeah, a yeah. criminal to to Arkham. Yeah, or to Blackgate. Was it Blackgate or Arkham? I think it was Arkham. It was, it was Arkham. a whole because it, it was like Arkham because they gave you they gave you like madness. a thing. They were, uh, the, I love the policeman at the beginning. Yeah, and he's telling them, he's telling the Montoya or not Montoya. Yeah, right? <laughs> and anybody and who's out uh, walking is not is a criminal. Yeah, it's a criminal. Not a citizen. Not a citizen. Do you know when they get and there, everybody's all awesome. like, it's so creepy. The yeah, art is so the good artists, in that one. Oh, it's I love it. And they basically wind up in between the Russians and the Marconi gang right. in a, fi- in a know, fire fight. In a gun fight, yeah. And then Batman shows up and just saves the day. And I think that one's a really fun one. I really like it. I think it's got great dialogue. Probably got some of the best dialogue out of all of these. Yes. And of course, Greg Rucka doing it doesn't hurt it. But I love the visual style of that one as well. Yeah. I think it really works very, it looks very well. Like what a do you comic think? Book. It looks yeah. just like a, if it was a one shot, where you have this the, the, this crime drama and you're, it feels that grit. Uh, it feels the spook. I feel the spookiness of it. Yeah. So I I love it. I'm sorry. There's not much. You said pretty much everything about it. What do you think about Crossfire Brooks? That was pretty good. Uh, you know, it kind of keeps up. Like now we like first we saw how kids see Batman. Now we see how the police. Think to see him. Batman. Yeah. Like some of them think like, oh, he's great. Some of them are like, how? Like, why are we trusting this guy? We don't know anything about. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I like it too. And then he comes in and saves the day. Yeah. You know, of course, to Proof justify his like, existence. And then he yes. tells the cop that doubt him the whole time. Like Gordon picks good men. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I trust you because Gordon, Gordon knows what's up. He trusts Gordon, so he trusts Crispus. Right. Mm-hmm. Crisp. Um, the next one is field test. It's one where he has the electromagnetic device that's going to make him bulletproof, and he tests it out. And it winds up getting that dude shot, and he takes him to the hospital, and he's still... Why does Batman not check this dude for a gun, by know. the way? Why does he let him into the Batmobile why and not check him for a gun? Exactly. He doesn't check That's him for a Batman. gun? What's up with that? That's and it's got a very That's... odd style. It's done by B-Train, but it's got a very odd visual style for Batman. Because like, Bruce Wayne armor. is so pretty. Yes, he, he is. is. <laughs> he and, is and like that's the one where he's hair. like golfing. I love that golf eyes. scene. Yeah. He's like talking mad smack to that. And then he does the gyroscope. I like a guy who... So he's doing community service, and the first thing he does is build a golf course. In the <laughs> yeah, <community>. right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it, and, and the Batman armor looks really weird and different, yeah. but it works for me, and I really like it. And I like the story, and I like the gist of it. What he looked like he looked like a little hawk. 
Yeah, he did. Like, he oh, had yeah. big eyes. He looked like a silver hawk. Like a Tally hawk. <laughs> yeah. But it, I liked it because it, it it's a great story to tell. Like, it's a good morality tale. Mm-hmm. Batman is willing to put himself out there and not hurt anyone else. He makes it a point not to hurt people. And it's basically this gyrosphere that can just... Be, it's bulletproof. And you can't... You know, I mean, within an inch of him or something like that, it, yeah. it bounces off. Even at, and it's at a point, blank point blank range. Yeah. But if you get a shotgun, get out of the way. So I get it. You know, and it, who would want to be bulletproof? But... You know, it has it had a consequence. Yeah, and it could have been worse. And it's actually pretty good how it like because so, this is a moment between him and Lucius. Mm-hmm. And I love the moment where Bruce comes up and he's like, "I'm willing to step in front of a bullet, but it's got to be my life. My life, nobody else's." Mm-hmm. But what's crazy is that it's really cool because they both agree, and, and Lucius is like proud of Bruce for making this. Mm-hmm. But what do we know about the end of Dark Knight? He turns around and makes the cell phones. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so or he kinda, runs and he takes the blame. Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of cool how it like you know it adds up to that, right. like how. He he betrays Lucius, but then like makes up for it again, up for and it. it's kind of like a parallel. Yeah, and I don't know if the writers knew that. Or I don't think they like knew that, about that. No, no, and I it like was the, good. I like the artistic expression of Batman too. He kind yeah. of looks like a hawk. I like that. What, if, what do you think? Speaking of looking like a hawk, Brooks, what do you think about that one? I actually really like this one. Uh, like it just, I just it just sticks in my head better. Yeah. Think, than most of the other ones. Okay. Because of Bruce being so pretty. <laughs> yeah. He was a pretty. He was very James Franco. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious so the next one is In Darkness Dwells um, that one's done by Madhouse it's written by David Goyer the guy who did the Blade movies it's the one with Killer Croc and Scarecrow yeah. I love that one Batman gets was... dosed by the spear toxin because he gets bitten by Killer Croc they, they explain that Killer Croc's a real dude that files his teeth down he's got a skin condition but he's down there and it's done turned him he's done to be turned Killer Croc it, yeah. Right, and then like he winds up getting infected with the fear toxin, and he goes and finds Scarecrow, and everything's all crazy. And dude, I love they this one so much. could have made that a much. movie. Yeah, right. That's yeah. a whole movie. I love the darkness of it, mm-hmm. and I love I love the art style. I love the way Batman looks. I love I just love this one so much. What do you think? Yeah, man. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I was trying to figure out the story with the guns. He at the end, he's like, "Give me your hand," and then he's like. I can't. That's not this one, though. It's, it's not that one? No, it's not I thought that was one. the Killer Croc. No, that's the pain one. Oh! That's the next one. The Killer Croc one, he goes... No, he... no. He was at the end of that one. He was like... Get... That's oh, that escapes. is the yeah. escapes. Yeah. That makes sense. It was totally out of turn. But yes. Yeah. I loved... Yeah, I loved it. That's the one where he fights Killer Croc. And dude, what well, the coolest yeah. thing is, it's got a really weird art style. Yeah. And there's a moment when like Batman's talking to Gordon. He like comes down from... The top of the, yeah. the oh yeah, and he talks from him sideways. Yeah, and then like and he's when he, down. Then he like then he flips down into yeah. a manhole and he like disappears in this like whip of like cake. It looks like a web or yeah, it's like yeah. I just love that, that so much. That was great. Yeah, it yeah. was. It's a beautiful and Killer Croc Batman. worked and Scarecrow yeah. worked. I loved it so yeah. much. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> what yes. do you think? Now I know which one you got. Oh, that was pretty good. No, it's, it's pretty. Probably, good. You know, I've, I've forgotten most about it, but I do remember. You know. There's no, there's no point in like the whole movie where it was like, I just tuned completely out. Yeah. Me. Right. Okay. Okay. We got another one next from Studio Four Degrees C. Uh, that's working through pain. That's the one you're talking about. Working through pain. He's walking, I guess, it's presumably yeah. out of the same thing. He's getting out of it. Yeah. And and he's hurt, and he's just walking, and he's fighting through pain. And it shows a flashback as to how we learned to walk through this pain. He met that woman. Yeah. And, it, you know, she, and it she, keeps she talking about meditate. Back. Yeah. yeah, while he's walking through. I thought this one's all right. I really like the art style in this one. I, love I think it. Batman looks gorgeous in this one. Not that kind of gorgeous, but <laughs> maybe. Um, but I did think that it was just a little. I don't know. I didn't really like the backstory that much. It just kind of fell a little flat for me when the flashbacks, but not really too much. I know you love this one, don't I you? I love this one. Tell me why. This. I don't know. I like the story. I like what he had with the with his teacher. Yeah. And how the fact she wanted to train, she didn't really want to train him because she didn't want him to go through this pain, or he wanted to learn with his pain, and to have him like meditate in, in these these scenes where you see how Bruce Wayne has is trying to cope with his loss, and then you find out at the end that. He wants to continue fighting, and he he doesn't use that pain uh, for you know to to heal it. He wants to use it as a weapon, and she finds that out, you know, right at the end, and it it scares her, 
it, it scares that teacher. She's like, I can't. You you've learned what you, all yeah. I can teach you. Yeah. So and, and she, she knows. Kicks him out. She's like, you she need to him leave. Out. You need to leave now. We are done here because you you've learned everything you need to know, and you're using it as a weapon. And it's how Batman survives. That is a badass scene and though, when like so they clean. knock that that they board across, that board across him, <laughs> and he just like and he just did yeah, nothing. Fantastic. Yeah, he That's cannot be hurt. What so, do you think about working through it. pain? That's probably my favorite one, I think. Okay. Yeah. Is like I, I really like the That's story the in that one. And you know, uh like it explains like Batman, that one's written Batman by Azarello. Batman like is a guy who's gonna get the, the shit beat out of him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And this so, one's written like, by Brian Azarello. Like do yeah. kinda need to explain like how does he keep going like after he's just been beat to hell like that. It really fits into that Nolan verse with the whole Batman begins. Like everything makes sense. The electromagnetic thing from yeah. field test. And this, where they explain so... where he learned everything, yes. all these tricks, all these strategies. Um, but yet, and, and once again, I'll say this again, Brian Azzarello wrote that one. So that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. <laughs> um, the last one was also by Madhouse, and it's uh, Deadshot. Yes, I love the Deadshot one. Um, I love the art style in the Deadshot one. I really love the uh, how badass Deathstroke is. Like He doesn't even have Deadshot. to do all this. Deadshot. Did I say Deathstroke? Yes. Deadshot. Um, I love how Deadshot's like on the Ferris wheel. Yeah. And it's like coming across there, and then on the train where he's going like across he, it, yeah. like it's so he's show offy, because he even that's why he leaves the, yeah. the bullet case with a DS, with on, a DS it, on it, you yeah. know, which stands for Deathstroke, Deadshot. The but uh, I really like it, even with that hat. I really remember, remember yeah. when I first saw it. I was like, the hat looks weird, but I, I, I love it. I think it's so I good. Learned everything what do you think about Deadshot, Deadshot? man? I, who was the who was Deadshot? Oh man, I can't remember the dude's Deadshot. name, but it's that guy that's in everything. Oh gosh, <laughs> he is so great. And it's like, I don't know, I like this costume. I like yeah. that double, that twin gun. I love the fight on the subway train. I loved all of it. It oh, was man. this action freaking When Batman bad. throws his face into the, uh, onto yeah. the subway wall or whatever and like smashes it like. Yeah, like, smashes like, his head like, He gives it quick his... after that. He's like, okay, okay. All right, all right, <laughs> so don't, don't kill me. I'll tell you who, who put the head out. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> Immediately. He sure does. But I love the the elaborate setups that Deadshot's doing. Mm -hmm. Like that Ferris wheel thing was crazy, and the yeah. way they animate the bullet and they hit the dude. Yeah. And I love that art style so it much. It was really perfect. Did. Like oh, that shot. The the yeah, all the the way they follow it through. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they, you couldn't. Be, I have no problems with this. Yeah, no this kidding. Is, right? This is what Batman is supposed to be like. Yeah. This is this is how the the story should have been told and. They could have easily made these movies. Yeah, these all of these would be great concepts for the for an actual like film for each. Absolutely. But you know, we'll see. Absolutely. What do you think about Deadshot, Brooks? I liked. It. I thought it was a good uh, a good closing. You know. Yeah. For the for the movie. And on a bang. Yeah, it's like you Literally. know, Batman's been dealing with you know criminals and thugs and you know your basic killer crocs. Yeah. Well, killer crocs a little you know. But Not he's so still, basic. He's still kind of dumb. He's a marvel. <laughs> but. Um, and now he's fighting someone who could actually be considered a supervillain in a way. Yeah. Because like yeah. Deadshot is, he's cunning and he's fancy. not quite superhuman, but he's more than human. Yeah, in a way. I get you. He's like an extraordinary human, you know. Yeah. Like in Batman, extraordinary. Yeah. yeah, extra. Like Deathstroke doesn't have any real powers, does he? I mean, he's like all changed inside. Like there's like they they they've done yeah. things to Deathstroke to actually enhance his ability. Yeah. Deadshot just has a yeah. Deadshot's has just a, like yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. He's like he's like an evil. I think that's what he guns. knocks off when he's on the subway. Yeah. I think he knocks that off of him, right? And you're right. He just immediately like, all right, dude, I'm gonna tell. <laughs> they told me to come after you. And like, this is what I did. This is who paid me. This is their address. This is what they ate for breakfast. <laughs> Deadshot would not be used to like somebody that he shot at like actually <laughs> making it to him yeah, right. ever. Yeah. When he comes after Gordon, he's got that. That's when he's on the train. Is when he's yeah. going after Gordon, yeah. and he he only misses because Batman comes. And it's such a great anime. Like all the beautiful colors in this, every it's single gorgeous. one of these. So I'm gonna ask you real quick: Which one of these segments is your favorite, Jelena? That was the 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 pain. Working through pain. Working through pain. Do you agree? Because you said that was probably your favorite. So you guys both like we that. We both agree. The Brian Azzarello one. And he's like he's carrying himself. I gotta change mine now. <laughs> it, it does really. It's so disheartening. Imagine like he gets all the way up. And he falls, and he's like in trash, and he's bleeding. You're like, how pathetic is this? Yeah. This is Batman's life, though, mm -hmm. and how he deals with it. Wow, that's your favorite. My favorite is it's really hard, but I probably would say uh, Into the Darkness or whatever that one was, the one with Killer Croc and the mm -hmm. Scarecrow. I really like that one. I think the artistic style, especially when he goes down there. But I also really like Crossfire. 
the one where they're the, they're trapped they're in between trapped the between, Russians yeah. and the Marconis. Like I just I like that one too. I think both of those are really strong, but I'd probably go with the the David Gillier one with Killer Croc and and Scarecrow because I just really I love it. But I, we love it all. Like I love this whole thing. So in fact, we love it so much. Let's rate it, right? We do your digs here out of five possible your digs, Jelani. What do you rank Gotham Knight? I give it four. Four. Give Good solid four. four. I, I was gonna give it a five, but I changed my mind. I want a four because it's still. I like the art, but the art can take you out of it from parts. And I know they're vignettes, but it, I, I, sometimes it takes me out of it. Okay. Uh, just little bits. But I'm good. Four is, four is solid. Cause four is I very like solid. It. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Four of your digs. Very, very respectable. What about you? I give four. Four. Four of your digs. Tell me why. It's, uh, it's something fun to watch. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of, it's Batman, you know, so it's kind of dark. It's kind of great, but not in like, you know, a depressing way. And yeah. More like a, you know. Batman fights through the night because he's so fucking badass <laughs> and he can do anything and people see him as like living shadows and yeah. shit, you know? Okay, okay, I can dig it. Four, four, I'm gonna go five. Wow. This, to me, is a perfect DC animated film. I love it. When I watched this last night, just fell in love with it all over again. It's like, I, I can do that with That's the awesome. Animatrix. I can just kick back, have a drink, yeah. relax. Yeah. And just yeah. zone out and enjoy the, 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 the experience. And I do that with this movie. It just entrances me with the colors, with the animation, with the stories, the simplicity of it, but the the richness of it as well, and how hard it hits on exactly who Batman mm-hmm. is and how it Batman is. operates. And it fits in that Nolan verse, but it's also just a great Batman story. It's a great story, and it's really or good. A series of Batman stories. Series of Batman stories that does tell one overall story. Yeah, kind of. Kind of in a uh, way. Yeah. They kind of all fit together because yeah. even at the end, when he finds the guns and working through the pain. Right. In Deadshot, it starts with, with Alfred saying, what do you want me to what do, do with these guns? guns? So it's all like kind of connected. It is together. I just love it so much. I think it's beautiful, elegant, extravagant, extraordinary. Mm. So four, four, and five for an average of five. No, I'm just kidding. For an average of 4.33379444324. Four. I think you should have put a seven in front seven of three. In front of that three. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know what? I don't have my calculator in front of me. Anyway, that's what we think about Batman Gotham Knight. Be sure to join us next week when I'm pretty sure that we're going to be talking about Wonder Woman, the animated series. Not the movie, but the animated, the animated series. series. I mean, the animated movie. Really? It was the fourth DC animated film. Wonder Woman. It was an origin story. I like it. We're going to be talking about it next week. I believe it's next week. Got to look at the schedule. Pretty sure it's next week. If not, two weeks. But I think it's next week. Anyway, Wonder Woman is next on the DC animated look. Uh, watch through. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Let us know how many you digs do you give Batman Gotham Knight in the comments down below. Do you love it? Do you leave it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? I don't know. Let us know. Be sure to check us out at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more like that. Patreon.com slash PCP to help support this channel and help us grow into new and bigger studios and all that kind of stuff. I've been Rockin' Robbie Bills. This is... Tony Bullard. And this is... Brooks. And on behalf of everybody here at PCP, uh, you dig?